Dr. Romano, I heard on Student Doctor Network that molecular geometry isn't a very important topic for the DAT. Is that true? Your best bet is whatever you hear on Student Doctor Network, do the opposite. So why don't we come around and maybe we can learn something on a very important topic for the DAT, and that is molecular geometry. What I want to do is to go over the shapes, the molecular geometries of five compounds. The first thing we do is we have to first find out the total number of valence electrons. So it's sort of like saying before you go on a trip, we want to see how much money something is going to cost. Now, what we're going to do is we know aluminum is in group 13. All you would do is forget the one in 13 and just think about it as group three. So aluminum has three valence electrons, Chlorine, which is in group 17, we can think of it as group 7, and there's three of them. That gives me 21. That gives me a total of 24 valence electrons. What I do is I put the first atom, which is more positive, in the middle, and I put these as far as apart as possible. I give the outer ones 8, and I hope you can see that this shape would be called trigonal trigonal planar. Now, why do I say trigonal planar? All you would do is you would go from the middle, you would have one area of space, two areas, and three areas of space, and that would also give you hybridization of sp2. In the next example, again, phosphorus is in group 15, but we count it as group 5. Hydrogen is in one, and there's three of them, that gives me a total of eight valence electrons. You put the phosphorus in the middle, you put the three Ps, that gives me a total of two, four, six. If there's any left over, you gotta put it on the central atom. So now, before we have three areas that are bonding, now you have three areas that are bonding and one lone pair. So that shape, would be called trigonal. Be careful of this now. It's the dad favorite. This is trigonal pyramidal. And as you can see, the hybridization here would be because there's four areas of space, sp3. Nice little trick is think of this as three areas of p. One is s, a total of four regions. The next one would be sulfur tetrafluoride, sulfur being in group 16, we'll call it group 6, fluorine is in group 17, we'll call it group 7, 7 4 is a 28, and that gives me a total of 34 electrons. What I do is now, I put the sulfur in the middle, I put these as far away as we can get them, go to the outside, Notice we don't give hydrogen any dots, though. We give other atoms the dots. And as you can see, everybody gets eight. Eight for you, eight for you, eight, and eight. And that gives me 32, but we need 34, so I'm going to put two extra lone pairs in here. So what shape would this be? There's four bonded regions, one, two, three, four, and one that's unpaired. Or unshared, I should say. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. This is going to be called a seesaw shape. Seesaw. And the hybridization will be DSP3 because notice we're using a total of five orbitals. Now, going back for a second, all of these have equal sharing electrons here. So this molecule would be what? Non-polar. This has a pair of dots, so this would be polar. This has an extra pair of dots, and this would be polar. So remember, all polar molecules contain a what? Dipole. So these guys contain dipoles. We go for the next one, and I see that chlorine, we'll put this as a group seven. Fluorine, seven threes are 21. This gives me a total of 28. We put the chlorine here, and we got one, two, three, and that would give me eight, 16, 24, but now we need two more pairs, and we put them in like this. 
And again, we see we have one area, two, three, four, and five areas of space. One, two, three, four, five areas of space. We call this one, this is a hard one. This is T-shaped for molecular geometry. Once again, the hybridization is DSP3, and we see these electrons that are unshared. This is polar, and therefore it would have a dipole. So these are the type of questions that Dad likes to ask. How many valence electrons? What's the molecular geometry? What does the Lewis structure look like? What is the hybridization? And does it have a dipole? Last but not least, I go to here. Xenon is in group eight. Fluorine is in seven. Fours are 28. This gives me a total of 36. You put the central atom in. This is a little tricky. You give the outer ones eight. Uh-oh, this gives me 32. So you're going to have to put two more in. I'll put two here and two here. Now, this is tricky because usually when you see unshared electrons, um, what that means is that it's going to be polar. But not in this case because this molecule is going to be what we call a square planar. Because it's planar, that means that these two can cancel each other out. That's a hard one. We got a nice question on this in the Dat Destroyer. This would be nonpolar. And again, how many areas of space to do the hybridization? Two. We have three, four. Alexis, do you think we should count these two or should we leave them out? I think we should count them. That's right. How would you like if we left you out? Mm. So we put them in. And as you can see, there's six areas of space. And we get D2 SP3. I hope this gives you a good idea. We have a lot of these in the Dad Destroyer book to really drill the needed concepts home. All right, I will leave you with this and um, get back to work. Um, hope you learned something. Okay, bye-bye.